Dan and his brother Josh had been working in their family contracting business with their dad, Bruce, for about 15 years. On this late summer's day, Dan was first on site at 4.45am. Josh and his dad arrived shortly after with a felling head which had been away for repairs. It had put them behind schedule. After their toolbox meeting, Dan attached the repaired felling head to his machine. The dim early morning light made it difficult to see the colour-coded cable ties on the hose fittings and Dan fitted them the wrong way round. With the head attached, Dan started work about 8 o'clock. But by 9 o'clock, the machine broke down again. The centre joint had blown because of the hoses being fitted incorrectly. Obviously frustrated, Dan headed off to find a replacement part while Josh and Bruce carried on working. By 1.30, Dan was back and began to fit the new part. It wasn't until 3.30 that he was able to get back to work. By 4 o'clock, Josh and his dad had finished all they could and decided to head home. With most of the day spent repairing his machine, Dan decided to stay on to get wood on the ground to relieve the pressure for the next morning. Much of the stand was very wet and had a lot of debris. Because the slope wasn't very steep, Dan thought it would be safer to work across it using an old working road and clearing debris as he went. Things were going well. By 4.30 he'd felled about 20 trees and was just about finished. He slewed to the uphill side of the track to fell the final tree of the day. As he reached for the tree, he felt the machine become unstable on the downhill side. He quickly slew back to drop his felling head on the ground and stabilise the machine. But it was too late. Felling the previous tree and clearing track had destabilised the road, causing the track to sink. Luckily, Dan was unhurt. But the machine was damaged. Dan always remembers that day as a bad day. Looking back, there are many things that could have prevented Dan's day being so bad. Here's just a few. Fitting the hydraulic hoses incorrectly is a very common problem. Redesigning them to be one way installed would be simple and prevent a tremendous amount of damage being done to machines across the industry. Moving across the gradient is common practice on flatter ground, but the tipping point being 12 degrees allows for very little margin of error, even for the most experienced operator. Retrofitting a level gauge, like we see in many four-wheel drive vehicles, could warn the drivers when they're operating in a dangerous range. Another quick and easy technical solution is to retrofit a track pressure sensor, which warns the driver if one of the tracks is beginning to float. Any one of these practical measures could have prevented Dan from having a bad day. Something for you to think about.